This is the Fractal North. You may remember it from such videos as This is the Fractal North and Gosh darn it, I'm having a lot of fun building computers. This is kind of the six month follow up, not quite six months. It's pretty good. The feet come off easily. I don't like that. Love this case, love the design. It's a little 1970s wood grain with the gold, but not really. I mean, everything that comes around goes around. Anyway, I found an off-label use, and that is this 280 millimeter fan mounted sideways here. Now, this is the Fractal Prisma. So, you know, it's Fractal's own cooler. It kind of makes sense that that would work, but what about somebody else's cooler? The Liquid Freezer 2 RGB80. Now, Fractal's cooler is very good. There's nothing wrong with it, it's totally fine. However, I wanna rock a 7950X in this system and the cooling performance of the Arctic 280 millimeter is just a little bit better. And enough people have written in on the level one forums to say I can't source the Fractal cooler. I'm really interested in Arctic, what do you think about Arctic? And I've already taken a look at the Arctic 420, which is pretty much hands down the best AIO cooler you can get for a monster CPU like the 13900KS. AMD just launched their 7900X3D, and generally, it's less wattage. It runs cooler even than the 7950X, so you really don't need one of these monster coolers for it. But I wanna try to do PBO and let the CPU stretch its legs as far as possible, and also the upcoming 7800X3D, which is probably going to be uh, very modest in terms of its cooling requirements. But nevertheless, I'm gonna set that up in this system and I'm gonna set this up with the Tai Chi Live Mixer motherboard, and that's the version that's got the special 10 gigabit card that was made just for me. You should definitely check out that video because it's a B650 motherboard that you can turn into an X670 motherboard with an add-in PCIe card. This is the system that that system is gonna live in forever with its 10 gigabit ethernet. And I've got some other plans in mind for my Fractal 280 millimeter cooler. So I'm gonna swap in this Arctic 280 liquid freezer Liquid Freezer 2 and see if it fits as well because I'm sort of curious and for some of you, especially if you're around Germany, Arctic Germany, uh, uh, the availability is maybe a little bit better in Europe and Arctic has some really solid stuff. They're definitely worth a look, but let's see if I can get this built and do some benchmarks and configuration and all that sort of fun stuff. If you didn't catch the other video, this thing is normally meant to just have fans. Put the fan and the cooler in it and the Fractal cooler is pretty good because it's got the built-in wires, so it's kind of neat. You know, you just get the, the tubes and that sort of stuff. It's worked out, it's worked out fine. Okay, let's unbox our liquid freezer too. So two main things give the Arctic its increased cooling capacity. One, that thick radiator. And two, the fans, even though the fans are roughly the same thickness, they have a different design and they'll move at a higher RPM, more RPM. You know, it's gonna mean more noise, but you can control that in software so that it's not more noise unless you need it. But there's also this ring around the outside of the fan which gives it a higher static pressure, which is good when we're talking about a thicker radiator. I mean, it's not that I'm criticizing any design choices that Fractal made. It's a thinner radiator, it doesn't require as, as high a static pressure, less airflow through the radiator, it makes sense. And it makes sense for CPUs even like AM5 because AM5 CPUs typically don't need a lot of power. But in this case, I'm going to be overclocking it. I'm gonna be pushing it to the absolute limit. And so I don't want cooling to be an issue. Now for the motherboard, as I said, the live mixer, the B650. But this is a special version because I was one of the people that complained about the lack of PCIe slots on AM5, especially high-end AM5 boards. How are you gonna rock 10 gigabit ethernet or you know, those kind of things. But it's an engineering challenge. You know, most people aren't gonna add a 10 gig ethernet. Most people aren't gonna do those kind of things. So how do you give enthusiasts something that's also not a thousand dollar motherboard? And what Azra came up with was you put the extra chipset on a PCIe card, which would turn this B650 into an X670. It's the X670 solution from AMD, two chipsets. But that also gives you more PCIe connectivity. Well, it's daisy chain PCIe connectivity. It doesn't give you more PCIe bandwidth but it does let you connect more PCIe devices more easily. So they put their 10 gig network controller on a PCIe card with more USB and more M.2 and more SATA. One of the cool things I like about the Arctic system is that you can do offset mounting is what it's called. And so the uh, plate for the CPU actually ends up being offset just a little bit, which, you know, the hotspots of the CPU are 
kind of down there, like if I can show you. So that's what it looks like under the hood, literally under the heat spreader. So the offset mount shifts the cooler down just a little bit to better cover the actual CPUs. The CPUs are at the bottom part and the IO part is in the middle. So the part of the chip that gets the hottest is this little part toward the bottom. To be clear, these kinds of thermals are really not a huge concern for AMD users, at least not in the universe of CPU thermal concerns that we find ourselves in. But it is nice that Arctic has done this little touch to give you the offset mounting. That is an option on Intel CPUs, of course, but the die position on Intel CPUs is different, and so the offset mounting really doesn't benefit you there. Now for our cooling, Arctic MX-5. Arctic has you covered, and the MX-5 is good thermal paste. In fact, Arctic MX-5 is what I use almost exclusively. The only other thermal paste I really use is the uh, Kingpin Special EVGA, the blue stuff. That stuff is a little better in certain scenarios, but if you just want to buy thermal paste without thinking about it, MX-5. Now I've got news for you. If you're thinking, I don't, the orange doesn't go well with the black and gold accents, I've got some good news for you. Remember I said this is a mesh side panel? It's not glass. You're not going to be able to see it. What counts is how the thing purrs? What's under the hood? The engine? I don't care about the color scheme. I actually kind of like that ASRock is trying something different. So let's dub that the level one maneuver. When you flip and twist around the radiator to get it to fit, you're trying to make sure that the tubes are not bent or crimped out of the way. Don't just force it in there. Try to find which way the tubes wanna go. And you could go tubes up or tubes down. Now tubes down means that it's, it's gonna be near your GPU, which is okay. But in my case, I'm probably gonna be switching things in and out of the system. I wanted to twist the radiator the other way so that the tubes kind of go up out of the way. But then that creates a high point in your system that's not inside the radiator, which I guess is maybe okay in this scenario. Now, what are we adding for a GPU? Ah, oh, the 7900 XTX Tai Chi, of course. Three slot card of dominating nonsense insanity. Ah. But I can still see the inside and there's all these colors and blah, 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 and oh my gosh, and what's happening? I don't know, it's just sad. Now the Tai Chi, you can turn off the RGB. If you prefer not to have RGB, not a big deal. And boom, look at that. And our live mixer BIOS, yeah. Now there's two things that are missing from our build. Storage, I'm gonna use the P5800X from Intel. Uh, don't blink if you look that one up. Ooh, that price. It's, it's an enterprise drive. It's not meant for desktop computers, but I've gone a bit off label with this build, but it also has this. This is the expansion kit, the X670 on a PCIe card. Special edition live mixer. I don't know if ASRock's gonna turn this into a product, but I love this. Now, there was one company that did the same thing. There's an X670 ITX board that only has an extra M.2 port. Like it uses four PCIe lanes to give you four PCIe lanes. This uses four PCIe lanes to give you a heck of a lot more connectivity to PCIe M.2 that are also by four lanes. They're mucks together, yes, of course, but if you use two PCIe 3 M.2, there's no bandwidth sacrifice here. Two PCIe 3 M.2 will not bottleneck through this PCIe 4 connection. Now, if you're looking for high-end performance without high-end price, the Samsung 980 or the 990, I mean, you're paying a premium. You're still paying a, a significant premium. I think one of the best deals in storage right now is probably the Solidime P44 Pro. It doesn't have DRAM. And Solidime has done more with less than most of their competitors. I've got a separate review of some of the offerings from Solidime coming up but I continue to be impressed by that drive, especially as like a game drive, because it's got reasonable burst performance and the burst performance is off the charts on our P5800X. That's what I'm looking for more than transfer rates. In fact, burst performance is one of the reasons that PCIe 5 SSDs, some of the first ones that are out, are so disappointing. I mean, yeah, those PCIe 5 SSDs can do 10 gigabytes per second in stream performance when you're loading a level, but the random access is, actually worse than a lot of the existing PCIe 3 and 4 drives. This configuration with the 7900 XTX would be my preferred configuration for a Linux workstation. The open source driver and everything that AMD is doing on the Linux side of the world is pretty much unstoppable. 7900 uh, or 7950X, I think, for the Linux workstation, again, fabulous choice. Two sticks of memory, that's definitely my recommendation. I don't recommend four sticks of memory on this platform. 64 gigabytes of memory is two 32 gig DIMMs, and you can also get 
48 gig dims. Is that right? I think you can get 48 gig dims. I don't have any that I have my hands on, but that's the thing. Or maybe you can do 24 gig dims and have two times 24 gigabytes of memory. Maybe that's your thing. 48 gigabytes of memory instead of 64, a little bit less money. That's also a pretty good sweet spot. 7950X3D, even on Linux, actually does work really well. And in this platform, absolute maximum overkill. And you can hear how quiet it is. I wasn't even sure it turned on. All right, I'm one of those level one. This has been a fun, quickie build. <gasps> Signing out, you can find me in the level one forums.